Hello viewers, welcome back to another episode and in this episode I want to talk about a VEX station. As I said in my VEX cluster video before, I will add two VEX stations to my cluster and this is the first one, this is VEX station 4000 VLC. Um, is this also the smallest VEX ever built, so it has the size of the pizza box and um, I was not able really to find out what what VLC stands for, but you will find uh, it stands for very low cost. But the price was about uh, 12,000 Deutsche Mark uh, when it came out, and this was about 7,200 US dollar at the time. So it, if it was very low cost, I don't know, but for a workstation maybe it was a quite reasonable price. Um, it was introduced in 1991. And um, it's a VEX station, and a VEX station is a workstation. So in contrast to my other systems, um, you're able to connect keyboard, mouse, and a display to that machine. Um, the front is quite unspectacular, because you see here digital VEX station 4000 VLC is written on it. And if we go to the back, here this is a power switch, and then we can go to the back. Yeah, here are the power connectors. This is SCSI external bus, and there is an AUI connector for network. This is a printer and serial port, this is a console port, and this is a connector for the display. And if we turn it around a bit, here on the other side, this is a connector for the mouse, um, like the connector for the keyboard, the connector for a modem, and this is the hold button, and there's a switch, you can switch between um, the console mode and the uh, display key keyboard mouse mode. So, let's have a look inside. This is the inside of the machine, and it's a quite uh, simple construction. On the left side is the power supply, um, here is a SCSI hard drive, and this is the main board, and the main board consists of two boards, the lower board with the processor and the chipset, the memory, and here's the upper board, a smaller one, this consists of the graphical unit. This is a SCSI cable, starts over here, goes to the hard drive and, and to the back to the external SCSI controller. This machine does not have this typical rechargeable nickel cadmium battery, which can leak. Um, the um, timing is controlled with this small Dallas timing module. This has an internal battery. Um, maybe the battery is empty, but the machine starts and um, I did not get any errors. So. I think uh, this module is still working, but um, if this model is broken, um, you can uh, buy a new one. This is not a problem to, to replace that module, but you have to solder it out and solder a new one in. You can see several chips on here. This one here is the SCSI controller, and here on the top this is the network controller, and this is not the CPU, this is the chips, well, kind of chipset controller, it's for input-output and stuff like this. And under this board is the R2 logic controllers, and the small one here, this one, this is the CPU. This, the whole system is called KA48, and it consists of this DC222 chip, or SOC. It's based on the CVEX technology from the late 80s. And this um, DC222 is the same CPU chip like in my VEX4200. So um, it's quite interesting because um, because it's based, it's based on the CVEX technology, it's a technology from the early Micro X3700 series. And um, the VEX4300, which is um, older than the VEX4200 or older than that system, has the newer Rigel um, chipset. And this newer but uh, quite slower machines has a chipset based on the older CVEX technology. In general, I've cleaned this system a bit because it's working, but uh, I opened it, did not open it for several years, so I uh, did some cleaning and uh, removed some dust and cleaned the power supply. But uh, there isn't really an issue with the machine, so I will close it now and then I will connect several things to that. Now we want to connect some input and output devices to the VEX station 4000 VLC. And one way is to connect a terminal and use a classical terminal like on, on my other VEX. But because this is a workstation, it's more interesting to connect 
keyboard, mouse and the display. I've never did that, I've used the machine in console mode only, but now I want to use this as a workstation. And first we need a display. I do not have an original deck display, but I have this. This one is a Dell P1940S and this is a TFT display, which is capable to connect to that device. Normally you have uh, five VNC connectors, if you can kind of adapt that to uh, to VGA, so analog, and but um, this machine has only three connectors: red, green, and blue. And this, um, these two connectors do not exist. So this is the synchronization, and you have the synchronization goes over the green line. So you need a monitor which is capable of uh, sync on green, um, which is a technology that machine used. But this display is uh, capable of using sync on green. But I need an adapter because I do not have the original cable with the three uh, BNC outputs. Therefore, I have some some stuff here, and uh, yeah, I will have to solder an adapter, and then I will use this cable to connect and this stuff will solder together to connect the display. But we need some more things, and one thing we need is a keyboard. This one here is. Um, LK201 keyboard. It's quite interesting keyboard. Uh, it's brand new. I've never used. It's out of the near out of the box. And interesting is you can um, change the caps of the keyboard. I have two spare sets of caps with different things printed on it to change it. And you can change also the, the thing here over there, where is where uh, is written what what, the, what these keys are. And this is the keyboard for a workstation. Then we need a mouse. And the standard, this is a standard mouse. It's from 1986. Standard workstation mouse. It looks like, like a hockey puck or something like that. It's completely round, three buttons. And um, it's using, not using a ball like other mouses of the time. It's using these two round things for the two axes. It's quite interesting mouse. The connector is a proprietary 7-pin connector, it's not PS2. Um, and um, yeah, this, um, I do not really how good this works, uh, but um, I'm quite excited that it will work properly. But because this is a workstation, there is another kind of input-output device. And this input-output device is, I think that's quite big, is this thing here. This is a graphic tablet, and um, I have to fix it because there is no um, um, the connector is missing. Um, but on the inside is written which cable is what. So I hope I'm able to, to fix the connector. And I have also got a new one, six pin, a seven pin connector. And uh, I hope you can fix this graphic tablet. You can use this graphic tablet instead of a mouse um, connected to a workstation. So let's do some soldering and then connect everything together and look if it will be working. Okay, now I've soldered the graphical adapter and connected to the back of the machine. And I've also connected the network to the machine. So I can do the machine as a satellite from my Bose Wax servers. Um, first, I uh, wanted to boot it as a known machine from the servers. It's um, the machine VXL1, as I said in one of my previous videos. But there was an issue with the auto again, and therefore I wasn't able to start the graphical user interface. Um, so I've uh, added a new um, satellite to the cluster, and now the machine uh, is the machine uh, VXL4, and it's uh, running. And um, another thing is I wanted to repair the graphic the graphic tablet tablet, but um, I wasn't able to connect. Um, um, a connector to the machine because it's a very thin connector and uh, I broke the um, connector uh, while trying to solder it to the cable. Therefore the graphic tablet is not working at the moment so I cannot show this graphic tablet at the moment to you.
Okay, now let's turn the machine on and see what's happening. Now the machine starts and we can see a picture. Um, I have to use the camera to film the screen because I have no found no possibility to record the output directly into some device because it's hard to find a device that can record a sync on green output and an analog sync on green output. And um, I've tested the sync on green capability of the uh, display with my Workstation uh, 2000 before, but I think there is an issue with the cable of my Workstation 2000 because um, the picture was quite strange. Um, maybe there is a problem with the, the red color, I don't know, but on that machine the uh, graphic output works perfectly. And also the resolution is perfect, it's uh, 1280 to 1024. I've read online that that machine only gave um, 1,024 to 768, but that's not true. Um, uh, maybe there were different configurations of the VexStation 4000 VLC, but um, I get a perfect full resolution 1,028 uh, to 1,024 pixel output of that device. I've also liked the sound of the keyboard. It's a quite vintage, cool sound, it's very heavy, it sounds nice. And now I have to wait until the self-tests of the machine finished. And after that um, I have to, change, uh, I have to um, select the language and then the machine automatically boot from the boot source. And now ESA0 is the network card and it looks up for a boot server. And I can hear it now from the machine that it starts before we can see the first line that is loaded from the machine DBS1. I can hear the hard drives clickering. The next room is the, uh, the machine, therefore I can hear it. And then we can see it starts OpenVMS version 6.1. And it takes a while because it's the normal startup procedure for OpenVMS and everything is loaded from the network. But first, it wanted the date and time. Today is 11th May and it's uh, 12 past 3. Uh, 13, 13 past 3 p.m. and the European way to enter the date and time. Now we can see it's also sending a message to a cluster. Interestingly, it's sending the request to the machine DBS3, but it gets the image from the machine DBS1. Um, but uh, also DBS1 and DBS3 are boot servers in my configuration. And now it's a member of the VEX cluster called VXL4. You can see that line here. This one, it does not find this file. This file is the file which changed the CPU ID from a VEX um, 4200 to change it to a VEX um, server 4200. And all other machines um, printed out an error that they uh, cannot find this um, file. But at the moment, uh, there is this, it's not an issue, a real issue, but we can see this error message in every start procedure. You can also see that some licenses are terminated not loaded, but that's not an issue. Now let's start Deck Windows. It's Deck Windows Motive. Um, this is um, uh, the new in, in OpenVMS 6. Uh, Deck Windows Motive came after Deck Windows, and um, I've got also a comment why it's called OpenVMS, but it's not open source, it's a proprietary license. Um, but um, this implementation of Motive is one of the open system uh, thing which came with OpenVMS 6, and therefore it is the typical um, Motive style we can see now. The previous version looked a bit different, and there was um, also a version before Deck Windows, it's called VWS. It's, it's quite old, I have VWS on some tapes, and it also looks different, but um, this is the first time I saw a graphical user interface on VMS in my life, so I configured it yesterday, and um, it, it worked, and it was the first time I, I see some kind of user interface. 
Now we can see the login screen and we can log in with the normal system account. And it loads everything from the boot server so you can hear the clickering of the machines in the background. Maybe I can hear it, maybe you can hear it as well. I don't know how good the sound recording is. And so it have to load everything over network. So maximum is uh, 10 megabit per second because this is the limitation of the network. And this is the screen. Okay, we have also the mouse here. If you uh, never have used a three button mouse before and I also think um, the left mouse button is a bit broken or um, but the mouse is 38 years old. So maybe this is, this is, I have to do something with the age of the mouse. So with the middle button, we can move the, uh, we can move the uh, window and with the, we have to double click with the left button, but doesn't really work. We can, but you can also with the right button, we can also open some the, the, the menu. And these are different applications on deck windows. And for example, here's a mail application. And now it loads the mail from the different. So you can see the left mouse button is not working perfectly. You can see here some awesome mails. And if you click on read, you see this is something has something to do with, with Oracle, something with the uh, with the uh, backup. You can see some errors. So everything on mail on this device. As you can see, the mails are quite old from, from 1997 and 1998, but there is a mail program. And also, well, quite interesting if there is a file program and we can browse the files and do not have to use the, um, uh, the console. And also, uh, another interesting thing is um, you can, if you want to have a console, there is this deck term just to, if you want to have a console and just to enter commands like on the normal console. Except here, this is like a normal UMS console. And if you want to log out, you can click on session, end session, click on yes and we'll be locked out. So I uh, hope you'll find that interesting. And that is the end of the video and maybe you will listen at the end because some user said that I sound like a hyperactive kid that needs some medication. And if you are, uh, if you listen or view until the end, I think uh, yeah, you are able to uh, understand what I say and you're interested on the stuff I made videos about. So leave uh, comments below and thanks for watching.